Y'all hear me out there loud and clear? Y'all hear me out there loud and clear? Gamers, do you want to boost your channel and get seen? All right, fight fans, how you guys doing? Thank you for tuning in to another episode here at Round One Sports TV. I am your host, Edwin. And we have an amazing show for you today where the all fights start at round one. So let's get this started. All right. Now, all y'all in a way uh, is the current 122 pound undisputed champion of the world. His nickname is The Monster. He is a Japanese fighter and he is currently the best fighter we have today, pound for pound. Uh, Naoya Inoue, here we go again. Another opponent staying active, defending all four belts once again. Now, the opponent that they chose for Naoya Inoue, in fact, is TJ Doheny. And uh, TJ Doheny is an Irishman. He's five foot five and a half, uh, 37 years of age. Um, he, he has four losses. His record is 26 fights and 20 knockouts. He's never been stopped. The four losses he went to decisions on, he has, he's never been knocked out. He's a southpaw. Now, we're going to be looking at a little bit of his footage in a second. I'm going to show a little bit of clips of his fight. We're going to, we're going to check, the, check him out a little bit. But I want to talk about the opponent and why. Why TJ Doheny? Why? Why are we here? The reason why we're here is because now, now Oya Inoue, right, is in the situation that I was talking about that I knew was going to come. It's getting hard to get men to fight with him, to sign on the dotted line. You want to see him fight against these better fights, okay? It doesn't seem like they're, they're coming about, are they? It doesn't seem like when Naoya Inoue's schedule is open, no one's lifting their hand. TJ Doheny took this fight. That's what happened. They went down the list. And they went knocking on doors and they went calling people and no one answered. And that's why we're here. Okay. Marlon, um, I'm sorry, Akmadalia, MJ, was rumored to be the next man up. Then all of a sudden, Sam Goodman came into the picture. He jumps into the ring, wants his shot. Then all of a sudden, he pulls out. He feels like he needs another fight. In fact, Goodman and TJ Doheny fought. One of his losses is to Sam Goodman. And in that fight, they went the distance. They went 12 rounds. It was a good fight. Uh, I got to admit that, well, we're going to watch TJ together and then... As I assess it, you give me what you think. Now, Naoya Inoue is coming off an impressive knockout uh, where he was dropped in the fight, regrouped, came back to win the fight in stunning fashion against Luis Pantera Nari. 
uh, the Mexican was tough. He showed his resilience. He also showed his power in the fight, uh, surprising the Japanese superstar. The monster uh, overcame adversity in the fight. And like a true champion, rise to the occasion and won the fight in spectacular fashion. So what's next? TJ Doheny. He signed, he's the next man to sign up. So uh, I was trying to see if this fight would be in Saudi Arabia or United States, but it seems like it's going to be in Tokyo. Uh, they're going to fight again in Japan. Uh, Naoya Inoue feels in top rank and everyone feels that he's better marketable and suitable to make the most dollar amount out there. You know, he came to New York City and top rank is still on that shit, right? If you guys don't remember this, right? 25 whatever amount of years ago, whenever it was, Floyd Mayweather was signed to top rank in Bob Arum. When he was signed to him, Floyd Mayweather wanted more money, right? And one of the things that Bob Arum told Floyd, Floyd Mayweather, and you would think that this was a joke, right? But Bob Arum was serious. Bob Arum told Floyd Mayweather right there in his face in New York City, they were in New York City, I think they were in Madison Square Garden in an office somewhere inside there talking. And he told Floyd Mayweather, yo, you want more money? He said, if you walk out right now, out this building, and you get mobbed by a huge crowd of people, I'll pay you more money. Floyd never took him up on an offer. Floyd never did it. We, so we never know what would happen, right? But at the time, Bob Arum told him, you think you're a superstar, but you're not as big as you think. He said, if you think you're that big, why don't you walk outside right now in New York, right here, right now? He said, you walk out this office, they mob you, I'll give you more money. How about that? It's what he told Floyd. When Naoya Inoue came down to New York City, what do you think Bob Arum was doing? He put Naoya Inoue outside in Madison Square Garden in the hallways to see if the people mobbed him. The man still thinks like that, where that, and he's smart. Bob Arum is very smart. And it's not going to take rocket scientists to figure out that he makes more money over there. You see? But if you can keep promoting his fights, you know, and he's so active right now that he's going to start rolling, right? But they got to take a chance. They got to take a chance on Naoya Inoue. And sometimes you got to sacrifice. I understand, Naoya, you did it before. You came to the United States of America. You fought out here for, like, no money and the corona epidemic, right? And uh, he fought, Um, what's that dude, uh... Uh, Neves, Neves, the Puerto Rican dude, also in America. He fought him here, right? So he's fought out here, but what they got to do with the, the Naoya, the monster, in order to promote him well, put him on a Tank Davis card. Put him on a Tank Davis card and let put him on the, the, the co-main event. By the co-main event, the crowd will be packed. Tank Davis is fighting next. Put Naoya in a way right there and let him show his skills. Showcase him right there in Las Vegas. You put him under a card like that, the problem is Naoya in a way is top rank and Javante Davis is, I guess, Javante Davis promotion slash PBC without Heyman. I, I don't, I don't. I don't know how that works, but, right? But if Javante Davis is Javante Davis' promotion, you might be able to talk to him. You might be able to work with him. He works with everybody then, right? Huh? So, look, you got to put him on a card that people are going to come out to see anyway. And then put him on the card, the buzz will start building, 
you can showcase him. And let, you don't have to control Naoya anyway. Just unleash him. Let, let Naoya anyway be himself. That's all you need from the man. And he's going to show up. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. And the world will see who he is. And what he's capable of doing and his skills. And I believe you do something like that, the next fight, he'll be able to hold the knight himself. And he'll take off. He'll take off. Now, as far as dancing partners, as far as uh, opponents, right? This is where we're at. We got TJ Dohaney fighting him. Who the f is TJ Dohaney? Okay? We're going to take a look at him. I want you to just, you know, we're going to look at a couple of clips before they fucking uh, trademark me here, right? That's what they'll probably do. I'm going to put them up on the screen right here like this. Right? Would struggle in this one time. Look, Henny doesn't care about the crowd. Look at his jab. Yeah, some fighters when they round. Left hand a little bit. I think there is. Don't he the ball anymore? By the way, at the end of round two. He's dying. He's facing the distance there, looking for the left and coming again. Working up the ropes, the left hand. Arnold is, is a good counter puncher. He's a good fighter. Uh, what what betrayed him in most fights was his gas tank, but he can fight green and white, leading up with the right hand. So that's Dohaney right there. And I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse. I don't know how much they're going to let me show that before they flag me. But I just wanted to give you a little bit. You can go check out his highlights and you can tell me what you think. Um, here, let me also pull up y'all messages and shit, right? I'm like flowing here. I don't even know who's in the chat yet. Nothing. Okay, that's good. Now, so, like, Naoya, anyway, right now, he he's going to need good dancing partners. And um, they could be a dancing partner that shows up um, from the past that may be able to give him a good fight as well. Stephen Kubo Fulton can show up again. Um. Since the time Naoya Inoue has fought Stephen Kubo Fulton, Stephen Kubo Fulton, he tried to schedule a fight. Um, he has a fight coming up, I believe. Um, and um, I believe that depending how he looks, you know, further in the future, 126 maybe perhaps, um, he can come back into the picture. You know what I mean? Um I believe Naoya Inoue will finish off the year at 122. I think we might get that fight with um, Sam Goodman. So if Naoya Inoue is fighting TJ right now, and the next man in line that has not one, but two mandatories from two sanctioning bodies, which Agmedalia MJ, he's a mandatory to one. And he just honored uh, his mandatory to the WBC by fighting Luis Pantera Nari. So, um, next man in line technically is Goodman. He's the one that's supposed to be fighting. Now, I checked out Goodman. Right? He's he's a good he's a good boxer. He's a pretty good boxer. He can counter pretty fairly well. Um, for the level of competition I seen him in the ring with, uh, and what they're doing versus what he was doing, um, some of these fights he couldn't put some of these guys away, you know, and 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 um,
tell me that 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 I turned that shit off and it wasn't that I that was my mic. So where the fuck was I, bro? Are you serious right now? Yes. Shit happens. Get it together, bro. What can I tell you? Can't cry over spilled milk. Mm. Shit just happens in life, bro. These are things that pop up in your life, Edwin, that want to discourage you. Like this lighter not working right now. So what? Shit's going wrong. Who? You know what? How do you deal with it? This lighter doesn't work. So what? Shit's going wrong. How do you deal with it? Oh. Listen. How y'all doing out there? Round one sports talk. Mm. We gonna sip on that coffee right there. We clear our throat. Wipe the sweat off the brow. We're going to have to do some editing on a video, I guess, huh? Yes. Well. Now, oh, yeah, anyways, next opponent would be TJ Dohaney. And like I was saying so eloquently, um, when no one can hear me, that Dohaney, um, he's an Irish fighter. He comes to us with a record of, uh, let's see here. TJ Doheny has a record of 26 fights, 20 knockouts with only four losses. And out of those four losses, he's never been stopped. He's 5'5", five, five, he has a 68 um, arm reach, and he's 37 years old. He's an Irishman. He's a southpaw. Doheny um, actually fought against um, Sam Goodman. We're going to talk about that. Now, oh, yeah, in a way, right now, um, if you're not happy with his opponent or choice of opponent in Doheny, uh, this is what I was talking about. Now, oh, yeah, in a way, coming around now, that he wasn't going to get everybody just to sign up to fight him, right? And um, you would think that a lot of these guys would hop at these kind of opportunities, but you got to understand who Naoya Inoue is. Naoya Inoue is the type of man that literally is doing Tom Brady, Michael Jordan shit. Where that he's bringing eyes to the bantamweight division. Like who were the Patriots before Tom Brady? Who were the Chicago Bulls before MJ? That's the type of shit he's doing. Most of you wouldn't even have been watching the bantamweight division. Hardcore fans, yes. But most of you would have not had it not been because of him. Now, I thought that his next fight should have been pushed out in the United States of America. But apparently, top rank is seeing what, you know, he's how he's marketable, right? I talked about this and I said that Bob Arum, in a way, he's, his, his methods are a little unorthodox, but he gets results. And once upon a time, Bob Arum got into a little debate with the one and only Floyd Mayweather. And Floyd Mayweather had went to Bob Arum there in New York, and I think in top rank, or they were in Madison Square Garden in some office. I don't know where it was, right? But I remember that Mayweather talked about this in, a, in one of his videos. And um, he was negotiating with, with Bob Arum. Bob Arum said, yo, check it out, kid. You say you're you're worth more money, fully Floyd Mayweather. You deserve more money. Bob Arum told Floyd Mayweather, "Check this out. If you go outside right now in Times Square and you get mobbed by fans, I'll give you more money." Floyd Mayweather was like, "What?" He said, "Yo, if you can go outside right now and get mobbed by fans, I'll pay you more money." Floyd Mayweather never took him up on his offer. He kind of took that as like disrespect, right? But at the time, Floyd wasn't Floyd yet. He didn't have 
everything he has, like now, you know, he was still a young upcoming fighter at the time when he was signed with Bob Arum that he paid $350,000 to get out of his contract and the rest was history. Bob Arum did the same thing to Naoya Inoue a few weeks ago in New York City. He invited the Japanese superstar down to an award ceremony where they presented him award during the time that Z young Xander Zion was having a fight in New York City on June, what was it, 8th, right? So Bob Arum takes Naoya in a way. What'd he do with him? He put him out in the hallway with the rest of the fighters. And he wanted to see if he would be mobbed by fans. And in fact, he wasn't. That's why his next fight is going to be held in Tokyo against T TJ Doheny. Why? Because he's going to make more money out there. Now, Bob Arum, you know, he's a boxing promoter. He doesn't get into this shit to, to break even. He gets into it as this to make a profit. So, it's not rocket science. Now, Oya Inoue is going to profit more where? In Japan. Right? Okay. So, I said, if you want to market him, right, top Arams got to be like, they got to be willing to bend a little. Check me out. Stay with me on this one. If you want to market this guy, put him on a Tank Davis fight, card. Make him the co-main event at a Tank Davis fight in Las Vegas. By the co-main event, all everybody will be there. Tank Davis fighting next. Then you got this who? Monster guy. Who's this guy? Showcase him on a world stage like that. Get another big star. Shit. Tyson Fury and Uzik. I don't know. Put him on that card. Top ranked fighter is um um Tyson Fury. Right? So what you want to do is... Put him with a big star because, see, top rank feels that Naoya Inoue is already an established star. He ain't co-main event in shit, right? It's not about that. It's about getting him more eyes out here. And all you got to do is allow Naoya Inoue to get that stage and let him be himself. You allow Naoya Inoue in Las Vegas at a world stage like that, you don't got to control him. Just unleash him. He'll do the rest. I'll, I'll bet on that. And the next time you see him, he'll be headlining it. If You got to showcase him, though, with also celebrities and all these people. Because everybody still doesn't know exactly who he is. But in the boxing world, they know exactly who he is. And that's why he's in the situation he is in now. Bro. They went down the list asking everybody who wants this fight, who wants to smoke. And not any, all the doors they went knocking on, all the phone calls they picked up, no one got back to them. No one answered the door. They were like, they knocked on the door. Nobody home. Too many, no, you just said, it. oh my God. Listen, they shook. TJ took the fight. Um, for as much as they saying MJ wanted this fight, I know Todd Rank didn't want to fight. Bob Aaron didn't want to fight. But to tell you the truth, there was nothing Bob Aaron could do. If the WBA wanted to push the envelope, there was really nothing Bob Aaron can do, or they would have stripped Naoya in a way of that belt. He would have had to fight MJ. Just in case you're thinking that, oh no. Top rank, um, block that fight or something. They really can't do that. All MJ has to do is fill out the paperwork. He is his mandatory. And if the WBA was the next one in line, there's nothing they can do. And by Sam Goodman moving out the way, it also brings back MJ. Why didn't he take the fight? Why didn't he put in the paperwork? That obligates and forces Naoya Inoue to fight him, just like Sam Goodman did. Sam Goodman did, he was, he took a step aside money, whatever, 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 but he put in the paperwork. But he was the one that retracted the fight 
to get a, another fight so that that was on him. He has the right to do that. So don't be fooled and be blind and say, oh, um, MJ, um, they ducked MJ. Now oh yeah, anyway, ducked him. No, they didn't duck him. Where is he? Where the fuck is he? Because technically he does have power. He can fill in that paperwork. He's the mandatory. Where's the paperwork? Why hasn't it been filed? Why hasn't Naoya Inoue got a, a letter, an email stating that his mandatory has been activated? That's all you got to do in boxing if you're the number one guy, but you got to activate it. It's not like boxing activates it for you. You know, they don't push you in boxing. Look, for instance, um, um, Ortiz. Ortiz was Terrence Crawford's WBC mandatory for two years. He never filed the paperwork to activate the mandatory claw. He, so he never fought Terrence Crawford. You could be a mandatory to any belt. You just got to file it and it shows that you're serious. If not, they'll just give, keep skipping you by. So, so when you see these things play out, you know, don't be fooled. You know, MJ could come on tomorrow and say, oh, Naoya anyway is not fighting me, as you can see. Oh, wait a minute. There's a way to, to find out here. Did you activate that shit? Yes or no? That's it. So, I think, hold on, let me check y'all message and make sure everything's going right right now. The boost press conference that I was supposed to go to, that my parents got canceled because my man's going to a birthday party. Man, I don't even talk about it. Oh. Sometimes you got to take things and matters into your own hands. Now, yeah, anyway, he's not interested in Saudi Arabia fights. Lionheart, what's up? He should look at this chat more often. <laughs> look at the reason why Naoya in a way is not interested in a Saudi Arabia fight because the Saudi Arabians just believe that they can do or pay for anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, meaning they'll they'll want Naoya in a way to fight some maybe a Muslim fighter or something or you know a fighter of their choice like a Javante Davis or or something somebody they'll pay outrageous money to go fight him. Here's the problem with that. The Saudis play by a different set of rules than what Naoya in a way is about. Naoya in a way is not about to fuck up his legacy or his plans because you have money and you want to play with his career. You're not, he's not a toy. You don't put him in catch weight fights that don't mean anything. You don't push him up weight divisions for no belts. You know, these are things that Naoya in a way is not going to do. You know what I mean? And so as far as the Saudis, you know, Wanting to go to fight for Naoya in a way. They're just not saying the right things to him. They want him to fight all these other people for these different reasons. And he's not about to play that game. Naoya in a way, uh, uh, he, he uh, really, really honors and respects the sport of boxing. And he holds it um, dearly. You know, um, like... The other night, I was watching Camille Moten on the card with Nick Diaz, and I wasn't sure if that was good or bad. You know, those kind of like Mickey Mouse cards. But boxing is changing, and the era is changing. And, you know, getting your eye out to different fans and different types of fans with performances, the way he's putting them on, you know, I can see the the market value in that, but um, you know, that's tricky. That's a tricky thing, and that's things that Naoya Inoue doesn't do. He doesn't take 
tune-up fights. He doesn't take these fights that don't mean nothing, that they're just about money. He didn't get into boxing, obviously, for money. You can see that by now. What attracts him is legacy, belts, um, writing his name among the men that did it the best. At the end of the day, you can see that he's really calculated in the moves that he's making. He's not just jumping up through weight divisions because the fans are clamoring to him to do so, so fast. You know, they, they see how good he is and they don't think all the hard work that it goes into just moving up one weight division to get your body to perform the same way you were performing at a lower weight. And it's not as easy as it, it seems, you know, four pounds, five pounds, you would think, no, this is very hard stuff. And you have to be very calculated in your decisions. Now, oh yeah, anyway, doesn't want to go into a fight and ever question whether or not he was at his best going into the fight. He wants to fight you and know that every time he performs so that when the day that someone beats him, he can honestly say, I was at my best. He beat the best version of me. Not this blown up, blimped out version of a fight that you guys will glamorize for him to have with a Javante Tank Davis up at 135 or something. Some crazy catch weight at 132 or 133. So, you know, he's not playing with his career. He's not motivated by money. The only thing he wants to do is solidify himself when it's all said and done as the best to ever do it. So, look, is it going to is it going to be tough for him to get these kind of fights in the future? Yeah. These men know exactly who he is. And the Naoya anyway weight division in the last two weight divisions anyway, there's only been one champion. That's him. 118, there was only one king. 122, no sooner that he entered the division, he, he got all four belts. He's the king at 122. There is only one champion in any weight division he's been going in in the last two of them out of the four. So, uh, you know, as he's been moving up, he's been getting more dominant. It shows and it speaks to what he's doing right now. And being a man that's coming on his second, uh, defending all four belts for a second time, he's starting to write a pretty good uh, boxing legacy. Because mind you, he, he, he put up all four belts against Luis Pantera Nari. Now, a lot of these fighters, you may think, oh, this fighter wants to fight him. This fighter wants to fight him because fighting him and possibly beating him will change your life. Winning four belts will change your life. It also will stamp your ticket to the Hall of Fame 100%. Everything that Naoya Inoue offers comes with a price. You also take the chance of getting knocked out. TJ Dohaney has never been knocked out. And if Naoya Inoue goes in that ring and knocks him out, it's going to send the message to Sam Goodman. Because Sam Goodman couldn't knock him out. He went 12 rounds to him. Now, TJ can get hurt to the body. I've seen him go down with body shots, right? We all know Naoya Inoue's body, you know, his, his body attack is vicious. Now, I have to give both sides to both fighters. You know, this is not a Naoya Inoue boxing channel. This is a boxing channel. And just like I talk about Naoya Inoue, the good things about TJ Doheny, he's tough. He's a real fighter. He's a he's a tough man, right? And he has that tricky little one two, that straight right hand, that straight right. Um, and then he's he he covers the left. He throws the straight right and he hides the left behind it. And he's real sneaky when he does that. I don't think he possesses the kind of skills like he does awkward movement in the ring. But as we can see, when um, Naoya in a way fought against Luis Pantera Nara, we, we thought the same thing. The, the awkward moving type guys are tricky. You know, these looping kind of guys. 
you know, um, and as we've seen that my question is, can someone push Naoya in a way back? And whether um, this Irish guy, um, TJ Doheny, he's the type of fighter that he'll take one to go forward. He'll roll with the punch in order to go forward to try to catch up to Naoya Inoue. So Naoya Inoue basically, you know, um, every time he enters the ring, he's putting a lot on the line, a lot. But they're making phone calls and not a lot of people are answering. There's not going to be a lot of dancing partners for him. I think in the in the near future, they can be guys that come back. You know, that could probably like stir shit up. Uh, Steven Kubo Fulton can be one of those names that comes back out from his past. And it could be a, a, a rematch. And who knows? At what, like 126 or something like that? I, I don't know. Um, the future is going to tell, right? But so if we're looking at it like this, objectively, he's going to fight TJ in September, right? And then he's going to turn around and fight Sam Goodman. So if that's the schedule, uh, you know, anything subject to change, anything subject to change. Um, I Look, Sam Goodman can actually take this next fight. How many times have we seen where like a fighter takes up a, a, a tune-up fight in between the mega fight and fuck up that fight and lose? You know, and um, Dante Wilder was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia for all that money, and look what happened. He fucked it up. That that They almost was already writing the contract out. You know how much money he left on the table because he didn't beat Parker? It had Dante Wilder beat Parker, that fight in Saudi Arabia between him and Joshua. Oh, they've always wanted that fight. He fucked that night up. So we've seen this in the sport before where that a guy takes a fight thinking, I'm going to take this fight right here, and that fight ends up being a war. And he takes either a lot of damage or shit like that. Which speaks of damage is... One of the other factors is that when you're putting your fighter in the ring with a fighter such as Naoya Inoue, and let's say let's say let's say that your fighter's undefeated, your fighter's never been knocked out, right? You put him in against the monster, you're gonna take a risk of damaging your fighter. And we all know this. After you get knocked out the first time, you know you you know you're really never the same. Every knockout it gets worse and worse. You know, some some fighters get knocked out and they're able to have more skill and 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 have a pretty good career after being dropped one time. You know, the rare ones in those occasions. But once you get knocked out, you got knocked out. Like that's going to be in the fighter's mind. So not every fighter is like anxious to be like, yeah, I'll fight now. Yeah, in a way, because with that comes risk. It comes a big reward, but it also takes um, that you may get knocked out. You may get damaged bad, and you're going to get another loss on your record. So there's a lot, you know, where there's reward, there's risk, you know, so... Yeah, listen, uh... Bob Arrow main shit. Uh, Miller. And and the Saudis have all the cash. You must not know anything about boxing, sir. Unfortunately, Bob Arum is the shit. And and the Saudis, no matter how much money you got, they they Bob Arum has something money can't buy. That's connections. Exp boxing experience. He knows all the people to call. Bob Arum is, is uh, he, he's an American boxing promoter. What the fuck does Saudis know about who to call? I don't give a fuck how much money you got. Yeah, you might be able to, you know, entice people, this, that, throw money around, but you're not, you don't have no real connections. No boxing. Hell no. Bob Arum has something that 
There's just things money can't buy in this world. The, the Saudis will be getting robbed left and right, overpaying for everything. They don't know how to negotiate like Bob Aaron. Get the fuck out of here. Bob Aaron is the shit. I'm trying to tell you. Like, the Saudis might have more money. Yeah, okay, fine. You might have more money. You might have better toys. That's not what we're talking about, is it? We're not talking about oil here. No. We're talking about boxing. And at the end of the day, the Saudis are learning about boxing. They're learning. They're starting to meet these people. Bob Aaron's been here for over 30-something years. Are you crazy? Shit. Don't tell me y'all can't hear me again. And you're sending me another super chat. Yo, don't do this. The Bob father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So y'all can hear me loud and clear, right? Let's just get let's just get that clear. <laughs> we can. All right, yeah. What's up, Ghost Rider? How you doing? Michael, how you doing? Bruce, how you doing? Everybody in the chat, family, how you doing? Michael Burke Banking, Goodman's broke his hand. He broke his hand? Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is is that TJ is the only guy that took the fight. Without TJ, where else were they going to go? To another bum? None of the top five guys are signing up to fight now anyway, and it is apparent. Whenever I want to read through a situation, I quickly go, then who the fuck is this mandatory? That's exactly I go. I go right to the website, and I'll go like right now. I can go to... um. Right here. Um, for instance, I'm going to the, I'm just picking one, the WBA, right? And I'll go to the WBA, and you could just go to the WBA, look up the ranking, and um, let's say we go to the bottom weight division, 122 pounds, right here. Click it. You know what I'm saying? And the number one guy for the WBA is MJ. At Medallia. It's right there. Okay. So MJ is the so and then you the next question is let's see if MJ put in the to be the mandatory. Oh no. Wait, let's go to WBA. No announcements. Hmm. But he wants to fight him? Hmm. He has a way to fight him. Legitimately. There's a ranking system for a reason. There are rules put in place. I know boxing doesn't always go by them. But at least if I put in the paperwork, like once upon a time, Charlo wanted to fight Costanza, right? And Tim Zhu came into the picture. They gave him step aside money. The reason why they had to give him step aside money, he filled in the paperwork to be the mandatory. They couldn't ignore him. They had to pay him off. In this case, they don't got to pay Akhmedalia off. He doesn't have to t take step aside money. Why? Because he, he ain't put in the paperwork. If not, we're going to have to give him step aside money. That's when you know that the guy is serious. Right? Sam Goodman, didn't he take step aside money? Right? So, that's when you put it in the paperwork. Sam Goodman got in the ring no sooner than Naoya Inoue knocked out Luis Pantera Nari and declared he wanted his shot, but he needed an, 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 another fight. Now you're saying he broke his hand, right? Okay. So the Naoya Inoue train doesn't stop moving because you're not ready. It doesn't stop going. He's going to remain active. Now, Naoya Inoue is telling his boxing promoter, I don't give a fuck who you get. Get me somebody for September. 
I don't, I don't, it's look, if Goodman can't do it, his hands broke, whatever, whatever the fuck is going on with the dude, or he needs three tune-up fights and, 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 and therapy, fucking go to a therapist, I don't care what he needs, just get me a fight, because he's not going to take any time off. Now, Oya Inoue does not let other boxers dictate how his career is played out. He's not like other fighters that sit on a shelf because the the fight that they want is not ready. That they're scared to fight in between because you can take the opportunity of losing and fucking up your mega fight. Now, Oya Inoue is already the king. What is he going to fuck up? He's already king. He's just fighting now. See how comfortable you could put yourself when you make yourself that kind of champion? You have a huge target on your back and no one signing up to fight you. <laughs> Listen, this is the only guy that signed up. You might say, oh, TJ's a bum. Why are we getting this fight? We getting this fight because he's the only one that signed up. That is the truth. You can say all you want. Bob Arum stopped the fight against MJ Agmedalia because he didn't like his record. Like I said, okay, you, we can say anything we want. But when you start to look at it, Naoya Inoue's schedule opened up. He was free to fight anyone once Goodman backed out. Why? Because he was the next man in line for the IBF and the WBO. If he steps away, the next man in line is the WBA. He already honored the WBC by beating Luis Pantera Nare, which, which was the, the number one mandatory for the WBC. And MJ doesn't fight him? Come on, guys. And then you're going to say that he's ducking MJ. I bet. There was nothing Bob Ehrman could have done if if he would have put in that man. They would have had to give him step-aside money, bro, in order for him and pay step-aside money to M. Agmedalia for him to fight TJ Doheny? Bob Aaron would have never did that. Um, MJ will beat TJ Doheny if you ask me. Yeah, I, if 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 Agmedalia and Doheny fought, I got Agmedalia. So what the fuck? Why would I pay him step aside money to fight a worse fight? It don't make no sense. When you got the type of fighter that in reality, if I put MJ in the ring with Naoya Inoue, I got Naoya Inoue. If I put um, um, Naoya Inoue in the ring with TJ Doheny, I got Naoya Inoue. Either way, he's not scared of none of these dudes. So there's, there's, I don't see where the people are like, oh, he's ducking them. No. No, he's not. Not even a little bit. Yeah, the 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 proof is in the and what's going on. Yo, his schedule got once Goodman stepped to this. Yo, anybody in the division could have fought him. You could have. Yo, your your fight was right there. All the money you could have stood the game was right in front of you. All you needed to be was at least in the top five. Of any fucking sanctioning body, at least, you can't, he's not going to fight you. He's not going to fight like a nobody, like a fucking 10 rank. It's not going to happen. So, if you would have made yourself that kind of, yo, you could have petitioned for it. Be like, yo, I'll fight him. Be in his weight division. Be a contender amongst the sanctioning bodies. And legitimately, you could have raised your hand right now. And been a fighter that fought Naoya in a way. And you could have got that 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 money. That bantamweight money. Yeah, top bantamweight money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, basically, because it's scheduled to open right up. They would just make going down the list. Call, 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 call. TJ, yes, I'll take it. 
All right, let's go. That's what happened. You know, so it's not getting any easier for him to find opponents right now. The cat's out of the bag. The people know who the fuck he is. And these coaches are not playing around either. They want to give their fighters the best opportunity to fight them. You go in there unprepared and you blow your moment. You get knocked out. Your moment goes by. You may never get that fight again. So sometimes fighters are not always reluctant just to just jump at every opportunity and thinking that it's easy. They may be thinking, yeah, we'll still get that opportunity a little bit later down the line, but we'll be better prepared. You know, you just don't want to go in there not giving your fighter everything. No, this is the fight. This is that fight you've always talked about, dreamed about, said that if you can come and win this fight as an underdog, shocking the world type fight. So you really want to give your fighter the best opportunity they got to come in a fighter such as Naoya anyway. He has proven that he's a very skilled fighter. Very skilled. So, um, you just don't want to just be like, yo, yeah, fuck it, I'll fight him. And, and go in there and look really bad against them. You know, um, when a lot of fights, a lot of fighters go back and look at their fights against Nawiya anyway, and the men that were fortunate enough to share the ring with him, okay, one of the men in particular that was able to, you know, he's going to be able to look back. He had two fights with him with Nonito Donaire. You know, he he was able to fight the, the monster not once but twice. And in his pursuit, right, you know, that second fight, he was destroyed. He was just, once he fought you once, you know, now, see, what Nonito Donaire was thinking all the praise and all the credit that he got from everybody else in the first fight in his performance by fracturing Naoya Inoue's orbital bone, it gave him this false sense of confidence that he would be able to even match that performance. And with just a little bit more, he thought that he could have beat Naoya Inoue. See, there's just one problem. Well, he failed to recognize that Naoya Inoue was in the same shoes. He already fought Nonito Donair once. He knew what he... And he failed to re realize that Naoya Inoue also got better. He thought he would be able to, to elevate his performance. Naoya Inoue also elevated his performance. And once he fought you the first time, he's such a master... At what he does in boxing, he remembered all that. And he remembered what Donaire's flaws were. Had he been able to see with the correct vision in the first fight, because he was seeing double after the second round, he just couldn't get his timing with him. He had knew where the shot was. That very same punch that he dropped them in the closing sequence of the first round in their second fight, he hit them with that shot, same shot in the first fight. He just couldn't get his good distance, and he couldn't see him. He couldn't find them. You know, he was he was tagging them. He was tagging them, but when it came to really, like, drop down that power, when Donaire was moving, it must have been fucking hell trying to, like, you know, if he was standing still and he had him like that, he'd pop, 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 right? But when Donaire was doing this, he, he was like, fuck, right? So it really goes to show he remembered that. He remembered where the shot was. And just, yo, he just rolled that shoulder back and he's able to generate so much power from a short distance. Now we are in a way. He just dropped it on him like this, man. And it, boom. And Don Lito Donaire never recovered from that shot. And he, he finished him. But it goes to show um, what kind of fighter he is. Coming in against a fight against TJ Dillashaw, although I think he's a lefty, you know, he's, he's kind of he's kind of like slick when he can be. 
Um, he doesn't really possess the greatest movement, but he does move fairly well. Uh, I think he leans forward a little too much. Once he starts to tire, he has a tendency of leaning forward, right? And his guard to his body, the middle punch, the outside sh body shots, he blocks well. But the middle, he leaves it really open. He's wide on his shoulders. So Naoya Inoue can capitalize with straight body shots on him. TJ also... um you look, he's never been knocked out. So if Sam Goodman can't couldn't put him down like that, it's going to send a big message to him, like I said. And um, I think that although his toughness, he just doesn't have that ring IQ that Naoya Inoue has, where that Naoya Inoue, not only is he getting better with every fight, the more he goes out there and he experiences all these different types of styles and fighters, he gets better. What makes him really dangerous for my and you know for me is that he's extremely active. He's fighting one fight after another after another, and you would think when a fighter has so much on the line with so many belts. He's just, you know, he's just not that type of fighter that, you know, like Saul Canelo Alvarez. It's like pulling teeth with him to try to defend those belts. You know, he, you know, risking it all. Uh, it's like they, they're calculating shit and no, I could beat this guy type shit, right? When Naoya Inoue is just saying, who's the next man up? Who's next? You know, there's no, oh, let me get this guy that and think that this pick right here. Some people might think that this is a cherry pick for Naoya anyway, or they might try to like sell it to you. Like, look at the type of fighter Naoya anyway's picking. Look at this cherry pick. No, it's not a cherry pick when he's the only guy that signed up for the fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's the only guy that showed up. So don't let him fool you. Don't let them tell you that. No, they, this guy, are, motherfucker, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Because had they did, we should be getting that fight. Because now, yeah, in a way, it's clearly telling you that his actions speak louder than words. The last past two date weight divisions, there has been no champion but him. He claimed all four belts and sitting there, but yet from somehow... Somehow, some way, someone's going to say he's cherry picking or ducking. You mean to tell me you can cherry pick and duck four belts in two separate weight divisions two times? You can just do that. Fuck, why hasn't anybody else ever done that? Because the only two men in history that to ever also do that was Terrence Crawford and Uzik. Are those two men cherry pickers? Are those two men hype jobs? Or what are they? They're elite fighters. I believe they're the best of the best, if I'm not mistaken. So the only other two men to ever mirror that are also the best of the best? So... How the fuck do they get the status of being the best? But this guy's a high job. Don't let him fool ya. Don't let him fool ya. Nah, bro. It's crazy. Yo, please drop that like button. Yeah, he thought he figured Naoya in a way out. He got that false sense of confidence, Donair. And they all was like, yeah, Donair, man. If you fight him again, you're going to do this. And Naoya in a way was telling the world, yo, in the second round, I fractured my orbital bone. He better be lucky. All that little bit of success is because I couldn't see his ass. You think he had me figured out? I had him figured out. And... When Donaire was campaigning, I got the blueprint to beating the monster and giving all these other fighters false hope, right? 
And Donaire's wife, she fucking hates the monster. You should hear this lady talk. She can't stand him. I think she has a podcast. I, I watched her once, but I think it's all based on Naoya Inoue hate. Because, yo, this lady's crazy. So they really thought that they had him figured it out, had him figured out. And he showed him that he wasn't playing with him the second time. That was brutal. It was brutal. He showed him no mercy. And then on top of all of this, right, you guys do know that Flash, Nonito Donaire, can thank himself for picking those gloves, the horse, the horsehair gloves. His complaint was, had he not been wearing winning gloves and now Oya Inoue winning winning gloves that have extra padded, that he would have knocked out now Oya Inoue. Had it not been because those gloves were padded. Now he's saying, man, I fractured his orbital bone with a padded glove. If I'd have cracked him with a horsehair glove, I'd have knocked him out. There goes Nonito Donaire thinking one-sided again. And people like him get blindsided in life. Once again, he was thinking, if I crack him, he was never thinking, but well, what if he cracks me? Once again, oh, in the first fight, I got the blueprint. If I step it up a little bit more, I'll beat him. He's getting better too. Never thought of that. If I take off these winning gloves, I can crack him harder. That means he can crack you harder too. So Nonito Donaire did that as to himself. He wanted the eight ounce horsehair gloves. He said he needed that because he going about to knock. Guess who punch landed first and harder? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, there's a, you know, sometimes fighters only see things one way and they can buy into all the, the shit that everybody's telling them. Nah, had you had these gloves on, yo, you would have rocked them. Had you did, yo, you would have beat them. Look at you almost beat them. You took them 12 rounds. Ain't nobody did that. And they hyped them up and sent them out there. <laughs> and it's not even like they sent them out there. The man legitimately, legitimately put himself in position to fight Naoya Inoue again for the second time. Why? He went and got that WBC world title. He made himself the champion, and he beat the reigning champion, Nonito Donaire, I'm saying. He beat the WBC champion, the French dude, right, and took his belt and put himself in position to fight. Now, it's not like Naoya Inoue said, you know what, I want to fight you again. No. Which proves that Naoya Inoue... Is not doing like rematch fights. He's not on that shit where he's doing like rematch fights or anything like that. Nah. What he's doing is he's going after legacy championships. So Donaire knew he needed that belt. He grabbed that belt, put himself back in line. He was like, we meet again. Now, yeah, I know it was like, bet. Bet. You just bring the belt with you. I, I want that. You know what I'm saying? So... What's up, Armando? What's up, everybody? Listen, she's hot. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, he's going to take a 37-year-old payday and retire. You're fucking right, because the payday was there. No one was raising their hand. And here comes TJ. Yo, I'll take the fight. He, What has he got to lose? He's He lost four fights. He's 37 years old. Nobody's signing up to fight the monster in Tokyo. He said, yo, I'm here. I, I, I'll take that fight. There was everybody else. I'm telling you right now, once Sam Goodman stepped out of the way, that schedule went whoop, wide open. Anyone basically could have came and got that fight against him. Any 122-pounder. Think of your best 122-pounder right now. Anybody in that weight division, basically. But you had to be significant in the rankings, I believe. 
I don't think he's going to fight a 20th ranked dude. You're going to have to be significant. You might have could even slide number rank six or seven. Maybe. Depending if you were like a former world champion, you were coming off a winning streak. See, the one thing with um, TJ, he's coming off wins. He's not coming off losses, right? Let's check that out. Let's check that out, in fact. Okay, these, these were his first fights. Okay, yeah. One, two, three. He's coming off three wins. So it's not like Naoya in a way is fighting some bum that's coming off of a loss. He's coming off his last three performances were wins, at least. So you got to have some kind of factors. You see what I'm saying? You know? And then, look. Who else you guys wanted to see? Help me out here. Help me out here, guys. Give me a name. Give me a name. Who else would you have wanted him to fight? Madonna? Uh, he doesn't have that many good dancing partners as it is. I believe his best challenges are going to arise at 126. <clears throat> I don't think that... Um, I mean, there's crafty fighters. There's good fighters. But... um. A lot of these guys have already fought each other. And when I'm thinking over these fights, I'm saying this guy fought this guy in my head. And I'm starting to try to like do the math on who I would think that I would have liked to see him fight. Now, unfortunately, in a good world, Casamero would have been one of the names a few years ago that I would have entertained the fight. Casamero, MJ, another fight with Stephen Kubo, Fulton. I would have entertained and, and sought that, the fight with Sam Goodman. Look, Goodman is a good fighter. And I think, you know, as a fighter, you're going to start to develop, you know, yourself. And, and like I said, I spoke about this. I'm not sure if the mic was off during this time, so I might be double speaking myself because I'm not sure where I would have got cut off or anything. And it sucks because I think that I'm over talking because I was saying that, you know, in a way, this could be good for Sam Goodman. You know, in a way, you know, uh, it, it, it boosts up his confidence again more. If his hand was broken, he really wants to um, give himself enough time to be at the best version of himself. So that if you beat him, um, now yeah, in a way beats him, at least Goodman could say he beat the best version of me. Not this version where I felt like I was more rushed into the fight and I felt like I had to take it. You don't want to be in that. You know what I'm saying? Because fucking that's for everything right there. That is their Super Bowl. That is their fucking NBA championship trophy. A fight with Naoya Inoue. That's your entire boxing career. Right there. That's the moment. That's the fight. So... I guess Goodman really wants to put himself in the best position. And who can blame him? Who can blame him? You know, I would also want to be in the best. So if it's coming down like that, I respect Goodman for that. Um, I'm going to furtherly check on that to make sure that his hand, in fact, is broken as um, soon as I get off here. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, just call around a little bit, see what's up on him. And uh, because... Right now, that's the fight to be made. I didn't understand why we weren't getting it. I, I'm starting to hear other things right now. Um, you know, and I think that this fight right here um, will happen. It's going to happen. Goodman is going to get his shot. Now, yeah, in a way, has already announced that he is going to um, play it the right way and... Uh, work his way throughout the division and before he makes that decision to move up. He wants to make sure that he makes the transition well. He's not allowing the fans to dictate his career. He's 
He's moving along at his pace. It's a very fast pace, too, in fact. Uh, but, you know, the fans do want to see him move up to 126, but he doesn't want to give anyone at 126 uh, an opportunity at beating him, not at his best. He'll make the move when he's ready. And when he makes sure he makes that move to 126, he doesn't want any excuses. He doesn't want to say, oh, I moved up too fast. And that's going to be the words out of his mouth in defeat. He wants to make sure that on that night, if you beat him, you beat the best version of him in that weight division. You might have not beat the best version of him at his weight division, but at least he'll walk away saying, I was where I was and I took a shot. And if he happens to beat him, he would he would honor it. Now we are in a way. So since he's not moved by money, the Saudis can't take out their checkbook and persuade him to fight fights that are meaningless. He's not motivated by money. He wants real fights. You know, uh, these guys, I guess, really take this honor shit to that fucking next level, huh? Uh, where that he reveres boxing as his profession. He honors boxing just like if it was an old samurai fight way back when. You know, and don't come here talking shit about my sport. You know, or doing any that you know. If there's honor in his in in his sport, and he, at least for himself, you know. So look, there's a lot of other interesting topics and news going around in the sport of boxing right now too. Javante Davis also seems to have his name back in. The, the media with the court systems uh, being that the fact that he was once put on a bracelet monitor and then the judge felt like um, him being in a Baltimore like condo or whatever that he purchased uh, that that it was um, like he was flaunting his wealth and that he didn't have no respect for the woman that he hit in the car and he didn't he, like she didn't feel like he showed any remorse. Like when he comes in, his arrogance. This lady, right? She must be like this, like a man eater as a judge, right? She's completely biased. And like you can see by all her actions, none of her actions have ever been based on justice. Not one. All her actions have been on her feelings or what she felt like he should be acting like. Emotions. He didn't show no remorse. He doesn't seem... You're talking about a fighter that is full of confidence, arrogant men, tough guys that have these personas. And because he walks through the door for who he is, she doesn't like that. Because in her world, she's the truth. She's a judge. Her job is a real job. You're playing sports and getting paid for it. She must not like that. She doesn't like powerful men. You can tell. None of her decisions, she's, and I'm just going based off what was published in the newspapers, Baltimore News, whatever, what they put on the web. Every time that woman judge opened her mouth, it was all just based off feelings. She had a real case in front of her, what he really did in the car. She didn't, she just cared about if he cared, if he showed him a res, remorse, if she bowed to him. She made it personal. Now he's in court asking for permission to go to the Olympics because the Olympic Committee elected Javante Tank Davis to go out there this year. So he has to go out to Paris. Paris, right? So... In order to leave the country, he's on probation. Javante's still on probation for that shit, right? He has to ask permission. He goes, ask permission. Guess what judge he goes in front of? The same woman judge. You know what she said in the courtroom? That Javante Davis, his words intimidate her. She tried to play the victim. 
Like she feels intimidated by Javante Tank Davis. If you're intimidating a judge, wouldn't that be violating your probation? Where is she going with this? He went there to ask permission to go to the Olympics. And she's talking about being intimidated. There's nothing wrong with this judge. No. She's not a, 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 a man eater. No. She's not abusing her power. No. She's not overstepping. No. She's not making this personal. No. What the fuck is she doing then? All of the above. At least only, and I'm only going by what's coming out of her mouth. That's it. Lady, you you got, you had a real case. If you wanted to really find him guilty for what he really did, all you had to do is keep it on that, and they would nobody could have said anything. I would have been like, well, he did the crime. He's got to do the time, right? This judge made it about her and what she felt like he should be acting in front of her presence as a judge. What she should be, he should be sitting there remorseful, crying. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Right? And she needs to see him being weak as a judge so that she can feel better on giving, showing him leniency. Yeah, the one thing Javante Dave Davis got on his side is that he's bringing the city of Baltimore revenue. So people like the mayor, you know, those type people, they make phone calls. And I think only because he's also a superstar that brings people to the city that they might have called that judge she spoke her mind, but I think her hands might have been a little tied because it looked like if she wanted to, she was going to give him the rest of that time. So she, like, said what she wanted to get off her chest. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if she accepted him or not, right? Because she started going on a rant. So I, I'll check in with that later. But I was like, wow, man, that lady like really like, like really like sticking it to Javante. Like mom, like, look, think of the probation situation, the way it was played out. I mean, when the lady says, you, you're not allowed to leave Baltimore. You need to get residency here. Javante said, Tank Davis said, I no longer live in Baltimore. I live in in Las Vegas now. She said, I don't give a fuck. Either you get a place in Baltimore or you violate. So he goes quickly, go get a place. It might have been a $4 million place, but it was still a place. She comes back on some shit where she's like, the place is too lavish. You you throwing on, in, on, the, internet, on the internet that you having a little get together. While you, who gives a fuck about who? That's not the stipulation that you can't have fun. The stipulation didn't say in the probation you can't get an apartment for four million dollars. That doesn't. What is does she, What is it with this judge that said that she even? You know what I mean? Like that's personal. That's straight up personal. That has nothing to do with your charges. You didn't violate, you didn't do, and then his probation officer goes to the condo. He knows exactly where he is. Javante asks him, yo, can I get this place? He says, yes. Yes, you can get this place. And the next day, the judge violates him. What did he do wrong? This judge lady got it out for him. She doesn't like strong men, powerful men, arrogant men. And you can see she obviously abuses her power. And when, whenever, like, and it happens in position, I guess. But, like, I was looking for the angle to be like, nah, the judge was doing something. It was Javante that was fucking up. 
because a judge is not just going to do that. So I was looking into it like, and she would put her own foot in her own mouth. Like today, um, when I read it, what does that got to do with Javante? She said that she felt intimidated by Javante Davis for asking her for permission to go to the Olympics so that, you know, he alerts them. He has to get it approved. He's going there to get approval. And he was told that he was intimidating a, a judge. I was like, holy shit balls. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, man. I mean, listen. Tank did some shit, and that's what I talk about. I'm not excusing Tank for his actions or what he did. Clearly, you guys do hear me saying he had a legitimate case to fault him over, and I would have never said anything about it. You guys heard me say that. I said it more than twice. Like, she, Tank did some shit, crashed into a pregnant girl in a car, you do the crime, bro. You got to do the time. I got no... That's what I mean. That the lady judge legitimately could have got on his ass for something he really did. Not for a condo. Not because he was inviting people over to her. What do you care what he does? As long as he's not breaking the law or the stipulations of his probation. Your Honor, that has nothing to do with you. Once you accepted Tank Davis' plea, if you didn't like the terms as a judge, she should have never took Tank Davis' plea. So she takes his plea and then violates him because he gets he does exactly what she says. Get residence here. He was supposed to stay with Calvin Ford in the beginning, remember? He got sent to Calvin Ford's house in Baltimore. He got out of Calvin Ford's house and got that place and got violated for getting the place and putting that on social media. That's what happened. I, You know, the judge, she didn't have to take that plea bargain from Tate Davis and his lawyers if she was going to be offended. It was like she took the plea bargain, went to sleep, and didn't sleep right about it and was like, you know what? Fuck Tank. I'm putting him in jail. How are you going to give him the plea bargain then attack him? So she, when he went to jail, he did the remaining 40 days. Now he goes to the Olymp, you know, to try to ask permission to go host the Olympics. He's not even competing in the Olympics. He's just going there for like positive motivation and to speak on a microphone. You know, they'll probably have him reading off some things. But the Olympic team, the Team USA, hit Javante as they're like, you know what I'm saying? If they get to meet Javante, them young kids and shit, and, you know, it'll be a real for moral, morale. You know, it'll boost the morale of the U.S. team. We haven't had a gold medalist since Andre Ward, right? So, you know, that would, you know, he's going there just to ask, Your Honor, can I please... You know that I'm a professional boxer. Can I please go to Paris and be with the Olympic team? Talk about, I feel intimidated by you. Why would you say that? Anyway, yo, listen, it's crazy. It's crazy. Listen, fight fans. Look, um, I got to do a lot of editing in this video as it is. It's probably long as fuck now. But uh, I just wanted to bring that up to you guys. So when you're sitting back thinking about people saying that Naoya Inoue is ducking anyone, no. EJ is the one that took the fight. Once he stepped to the side, um, um, Goodman, it made his schedule open. And as you can see, if anybody wanted that fight, they could have raised their hand or contacted them to fight. And anyone that is the number one ranked opponent in any major sanctioning body can fill out paperwork to become his mandatory. There's no stopping that. 
They have systems put in place for these sanctioning bodies and ranking systems and mandatories for a reason. Just like the gentleman that put in the paperwork to fight Oliver Uzik and Uzik opted to fight Tyson Fury. That's on him. That's his choice. But he had to vacate that belt. Because the IBF said, what? The next man up. So if you follow that work, You'll get that fight. TJ Dillashaw is the only man that um, raised his hand. Now, oh yeah, anyway, is not ducking anyone. The only reason why he's fighting TJ, because TJ said yes, that is the only reason. No one else showed up. No one else showed up. And then no one else showed up which with, with importance, a little, a little bit of a name. You know, and if you're wondering, this fight right here is going to be held in Tokyo, Japan. Yeah, and my idea for Naoya Inoue in order to advertise him in America, put him on somebody's card that's big. I would have put him on the Tyson Fury card in a cool main event. Go case them in Las Vegas. You know, but Tyson Fury can't come to Vegas. That's why they haven't done that. That's right. Tyson Fury can't come to Vegas. He's got to fight in Saudi. His passport's been pulled from him. From the feds. Fuck. And you can't work with Tice, um, Tank Davis because he's with the PBC and they're not going to put a top rank fighter under their co main event. That'll never happen, I don't think. They'll put the fighters to fight against each other, but they're not going to put them to fight in a co main event. So that's not going to happen. The next available star is Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is a free agent. That you can work with Terrence Crawford You can put the best two top fighters in the world On the same card Hmm Terrence Crawford um, Bob Aram have history It might not be the best But they work together You can probably pull that off you put Naoya Inoue in a co main event, Terrence Crawford main headlining the card, you can showcase Naoya Inoue like that. The next time he fights, he'll he'll be able to um carry the card himself. Oh. Yeah, you can't do it if you're in Vegas. I caught that. Yeah, he can't fight in Vegas. Yeah, because he's still fucking got it. <laughs> fucking with mobsters, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, fight fans, listen, I got to edit this video anyway. It's been great. Um, that kind of threw myself off. Shit, you you know what I'm saying? You got shit you go through. But it is what it is, right? Show must go on. So, fight fans, this is what we're going to get. We're going to talk more about this. The Jerome Boots and his fight is coming up. I'm going to be going on. I'll be making a live. We'll um, all join us. Tune in. We're going to be going for the prestigious Notre Dame trophy, um, which I currently am holding by default because nobody's won it. So, I, you know, I'm just going to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys. Yo, salute to the chat. Um, what's up to everybody in the chat? You guys have been amazing, patient, found a way to get through to your boy and let me know that the mic was off. It must have been funny. I'm going to go back and read all the chats. So if you think you would say some slick shit, I'm going to go read that shit right now. All right? <laughs> Listen, you guys have been the best. I'm back with another edition here at Round 1 Sports TV. Don't forget to give the videos a like on your way out. And if you haven't already, 